When Hicks, Newt, and Bueller arrived at Base 3 instead of the expected Xenomorph cargo, General Spears did not meet the group with the warmest of welcomes. Threats of sedition charges and other legal and physical threats followed with a swift apprehension of the survivors into custody at Spears' command. The second-in-command of the base, Major Eugene Powell, grew increasingly concerned over Spears' recent behavior. The General's reaction to the loss of the Xenomorph specimens raised this concern even higher, inspiring Powell to keep a daily log to keep track of Spears and the ongoing experiments taking place on the base. Log on, eyes only. Override clearance A1A required. Major Eugene Powell, USCM. In light of recent events, I have opened a daily log to summarize my assessment of Base Commander Spears' fitness for duty. I realize these notes could be construed as mutinous, even traitorous, but it has fallen to me to keep some sort of record. At 0900 hours, I relieved Lieutenant Bainbridge and took over a duty officer in the main habitat. I observed General Spears alone near one of the containment vessels. He seemed to be watching them. At 10.23 hours, I overheard the general mutter something under his breath. He was smiling as he said it, repeating it to himself several times. Perfection. The general's behavior has been erratic for months, but I noticed a marked change for the worse with the arrival of the cargo vessel from Earth. Two humans and a synthetic had commandeered the ship at launch. During the voyage, they somehow destroyed a cluster of Spears' incubated specimens. General Spears' research and development team had been waiting on the xenomorph specimens in order to study the possible mutations brought on by the creature's multiple human strains. A sweep of the vessel, however, confirmed there were no salvageable specimens. Apparently, the lowest survivable setting on the sleep chambers was sufficient to keep the specimens themselves dormant. The containers were dead. Usual exit mode, to judge from the blood spray patterns, and mostly consumed. The adult stage specimens apparently killed one of their own and utilized its blood to burn free of an area in which they were contained. Acid burns in various places indicated a battle between the stowaways and the aliens. I have done a preliminary debriefing of the CM sergeant and from this report determined that one was killed by weapons fire on board and the other two were ejected into space. Apparently the female stowaway went EVA and battled the remaining pair who survived for some minutes in hard vacuum without apparent ill effect. The corpses of the two killed on ship were ejected. I had never seen the general so angry, so disappointed. The mission to attain the specimens from the American, as Spears deemed it, was considered priority one. The stowaways had lost communications soon after launch and had come to believe Earth's alien plagues had been destroyed by an all-out nuclear attack. None of that was of any concern to General Spears. The General's obsession with the alien has clouded his reason. He answers to no authority but his own. The prisoners could have provided important information about Earth, about our future. Instead, Spears has quarantined them for use as alien breeding stock. I've seen enough killing. It has to stop. The General has his loyalists, but it's only a matter of time before there is open rebellion. And God help us when it starts. Log off. In this series, I'm recounting the Earth War, as depicted in the Aliens comic series. The accounts are explored as originally published, despite certain names, locations, and other events having been altered over time. For more on the Earth War, you can check out the Accounts of the Earth War playlist on my channel on the end screen, and stay tuned for the latest videos. As always, I'd like to thank you very much for watching, I really appreciate it, and if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a like, and you can also subscribe for all the latest videos from the channel. A very, very special thanks goes out to Wayland Jutani Executive, Emuric, part of the Patreon Hive. I'd also like to thank our Hive's Queen, Lady Anne. If you'd like to join the Hive and support the channel, check out my Patreon page for exclusive posts and contests. In the meantime, you can catch up with Alien Theory over social media. Follow at Alien underscore Theory on Twitter and at Alien Theory YT on Facebook and Instagram for more. And until next time, this is Alien Theory, signing off.